purpose of this video is to simulate the channel unit provisioning and subsequent transport of SD video over an IP network. In a point to point A to Z configuration using media links MD8000 J2K encoder and the J2K decoder. The resulting effect is to pass SD video from point A to point Z using IP packet routing. This is a simulated circuit. It contains a generator, an AN chassis, a switch, the ZN chassis, and an audio video monitor. This particular MD8000 has seven slots. Slot one, slot four, slot five, slot seven. Slot seven is important because we'll use this to interface our computer to provision the J2K card in slot one. Slot six is also important. It interfaces with the telco facility using a pair of optical fibers. With the computer already interfaced to the RJ45 connector on the back of the switch controller in slot 7, we'll go to the command prompt and ping the circuit using the default IP 192.168.1.1. Then we'll do the same for the Z end of the circuit. If the pings are successful, we'll go to the desktop and double click on the Pro MD. Let's do that. We'll double click on the Pro MD icon. Insert node. And scan node over network? Yes. And then we enter our IP address 192.168.1.1 and scan. This brings us to this grayed out screen, 192.168.1.1. Now to actually show the activity on this screen, we'll have to um, we highlight the node list and then we click on the eyes, on the eyeballs, which shows us the activity on this on the screen is representation of the uh, of, of the cars in the chassis. We will now go to the network tab of the Swiss controller which is the card 7 and what we want to do here is uh, to verify that the IP address is 192.168.1.1 now we're gonna keep it that way keep the default IP address uh, we we'll probably have to change it on the um, on the Z end of the circuit on the other card just for control purposes. We'll have uh, 192.168.1.2 for the Z end chassis. Now going back to the switch controller on the A end chassis 192.168.1.1. Right in the general tab, we want to name the circuit. Uh, we call it Acme Stadium. Now it actually shows the name of the of the of the circuit, Acme Stadium, one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. Okay, now we go to the J two K encoder card, right in the service transmit tab. Signal format is now off. It should be on or enabled. Um, service enabled is actually disabled now, but we want this enabled because this would actually uh, activate your packet transmission. You actually actually be transmitting packets 
and this is enables you use a data protocol datagram protocol uh, we want to set this to about 1025 and your error correction should be off when using user datagram protocol UDP but we leave it off for now our source IP is 1.1 .1. okay now we want to set now we have line 1 and line 2 we like to set keep this IP address the same and we'll on line 2 we'll have we'll increment the, the host by 1 so this be 192.168.1.2 destination IP address we'll keep that the same and then we'll, we'll change this eventually to 239.1.1.2 right service type we'll have service type will be 1 time to live we'll actually make this 10 we'll make this 0 protocol type we'll keep that the same the source back will be kept the same now your transmit VLAN would actually be um, a range of 100 to 4089 so we can choose any figure in between there and then we'll increment by one for this side so for instance if we have 111 this would be 112 right uh, our transmit VLAN priority we want to keep the seven since we are uh, transmitting video um, destination Mac right the first three pairs of numbers are actually the manufacturer the manufacturer ID and the last three pairs we can actually we can randomly change these what we'll do with these we'll make these um, we make this shelf slot port and line I'll show you in a little while and then we'll, we'll enable the Mac link and we'll set our port and then we'll, we'll, we'll apply and then we'll click OK now let's see what happens I've enabled um, I've enabled in the service transmit mode I've enabled the signal format the SD525i I've enabled the send enable is now enabled the UDP port is now 1025 my error correction is on my source IP 168.1.1 right my line 2 source IP 192.168.1.2 destination IP 239.1.1.1 239.1.1.2 Incremented by one. Uh, my service type is one. My time to live is ten. Protocol seventeen. We'll, we'll ma we maintain the MAC as before. And he, he, this is what I explained earlier. We made this one one one. Your transmit VLAN ID and on line two is one one two. Right for the destination MAC, we kept the manufacturer the same. Right. We change this the shelf, slot, port, and line. Shelf, slot, port, and line. Line two. Right. You'll see the port when I open the link. Okay. And now we apply and click OK. Okay, this is the um, this is the link I'm talking about. When I, we click open here, it gives us this link, which is this right here. Now, if you look to the top, you actually see the port, right? It's port one, slot six, ten gig. This is the actual. The slot six is your ten gig trunk card which attaches to the um, the telco facilities a pair of optical fibers attached to the back of that card um, now let's go we click OK and and now it shows your SD signal 
is passing your SD signal. Now, let's insert a second node to provision the decoder. Node, insert node. We're going to the, um, the provision scan. We're getting ready to provision uh, the Z end of the circuit. the IP address for the ZN. We scan. We have our grayed out field as, as before. 192.168. Right, we'll highlight this and then the eyes is going to populate. Then we we'll click on the eyes which is going to bring us to a, a, an active screen. And here's our active screen. Now on our active screen, we can actually see uh, your in-service, your ACT manual, line one. Of the decoder. Now let's scroll down a little bit. And now in the general tab, uh, we already have services enabled. Uh, we, um, we change the name. We actually put the name in for the first time. Um, so that name should appear on the active screen as we should see in a little while. Okay, here goes there go the name right there. That's the name. It's one nine two one six eight dot one dot two. Now in the service receive tab, right, we have to um, we have to change these figures here. Since, since on the uh, on the A end of the circuit, we had as uh, the transmit VLAN ID being one 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 for line one and one one two for line two. And since this is the destination, right? This has to be the same. So it'd be one one one, and line two was one one two. And we had our destination MAC. We had zero one. We maintained the manufacturer's part zero one zero zero five e, and we changed these to represent the shelf, the slot, the port, and the line. Right. Let's move right, moving right along. Let's show you a completed page. What it looks like. Okay. Now, what we have, we enabled it. We enabled. It's already enabled. Right. We. Populated 111 for the receive VLAN as on the AN of the circuit designated for the destination. And we did the 1112 for line 2. The receive MAC, which corresponds to the destination MAC on the AN of the circuit, is 01005E01011 and 12. Now we apply and click OK and we should see our video should be able to come through okay now now what we have here is we actually have the video coming out of the output that's our video With this simulated circuit, we have demonstrated the transportation of SD video 
over an IP network, which first required successfully pinging each shelf, the A end and the Z end, for continuity using a computer interface with the control card in slot 7. This allowed us to successfully provision MediaLink's MD8000 J2K encoder and the J2K decoder, which required the manual provisioning of the software settings, i.e. source and destination IP and MAC addresses, plus additional settings.